Baron Rosencrantz was an eccentric sage who was, throughout his life, a spiritual seeker. He has been called a stranger in the history of Danish art, and little is known about him outside a small though international circle of admirers. His father died before he was even three years old, so he became closely attached to his Scottish-born mother. After her husband's death, his mother developed an interest in spiritualism, and in 1891 she moved to Rome permanently and became a spiritualist medium. At 16, he was sent to Rome to study under professor and fresco painter Faustini, who gave him an appreciation for the Italian masters that influenced his work. Two years later, he continued his studies at l'Académie Julian in Paris. From his early years, he was influenced by the French salon painters, the Pre-Raphaelites, Romantic artists William Blake and J.M.W. Turner, and later by the Impressionist Claude Monet, as well as, of course, the Symbolist movement which he was steeped in. He moved permanently to London, where he developed his reputation and established himself as a spiritual artist. He also had many commissions and made stained-glass windows and bronze sculptures for a number of English churches and castles. In London, he met Austrian philosopher Rudolf Steiner personally. Rosencrantz felt he had a mission in carrying out Steiner's ideas of using the spectral colors in order to reach the invisible spiritual reality. Steiner, who taught Rosencrantz about anthroposophy, which also incorporated Goethe's color theory, said, Colors are the soul of nature in the entire cosmos, and we become part of that soul when we live with the colors. Anthroposophy derives from two Greek words, Anthropos, human being, and Sophia, wisdom. As theosophy, theo and Sophia, meaning wisdom of God, or divine wisdom, anthroposophy means wisdom of the human being, or the wisdom that knows what it means to be human. In other words, it is a path of self-knowledge. Steiner knew a lot about theosophy, and his movement is often confused with it, but he rejected it because he thought it was too focused on Eastern spirituality. He wanted his movement to be rooted in Western traditions, as they were closer at hand. Theosophists, he thought, were always looking for exotic wisdom, when their attention should have been focused on their own cultural repertoire. The four round images are from a series Rosencrantz made for Steiner in 1923, illustrating the seven apocalyptic seals. In Steiner's system, certain colors best represented specific spiritual concepts. His art to me feels like this eternal blinding light of God or of the Spirit. I feel like he's tapping into some very real part of the feeling of religion and connection with the divine, which he depicted as a mix of imagery from the Greco-Roman and Christian traditions. Basically, he manages to show one intuitive aspect of the feeling or color of the Spirit in a visual way, especially in a Christian sense of divine light, which accounts for the brightness and blues of his color palette. This matches very much the northern Protestant religion and native Danish culture he was brought up in, which is why he's striking as an artist and why his work has meaning for us to study as a work of true culture. My favorite images from this artist are the ones with Greek cultural undertones, which I think have more meaning as they're less abstract and original in style. I'm going to read some quotes about Greek religion which I think are relevant to the paintings here, from a book called Greek Piety. The cult of the dead, that is, of the ancestors, united the living and the departed members of the clan. It was a sacred duty to bring offerings to the tombs, libations and presents of food. Many customs, rites of purifications and certain meals had to be observed in a house of mourning. A Greek temple was not a building in which the pious gathered together to offer worship. It was the god's dwelling place. We make a spot holy by putting a sanctuary there, but in antiquity the holiness belonged to the place itself, and a sanctuary was erected there because the spot was holy. Zeus was surnamed after the mountains about whose summits he gathered his clouds. Artemis and other deities often after well-known sanctuaries. It was hardly possible to take a step outdoors without stumbling on a holy spot, a chapel, a sacred precinct, or at least a herm, a pillar with a head of Hermes atop. Many places of worship had not even a modest chapel. The image of the god, if there was one, stood under the open sky, 
and there was always a plain altar of rough stone or turf. Trees growing in the sacred precinct were protected and might not be cut down, so a grove in a land so ill-supplied with timber as Greece was often synonymous with a holy place. The feelings which the pious experienced in such a place were doubtless more profound than those which were aroused when they stood before or in a showy temple and admired its artistry. Pure be his soul who enters this pure place, and here his hand in lustral water laves. The good a drop will cleanse, but for the base, ocean suffices not with all his waves.